Hi guys, welcome to another video. In this one we're going to talk about measurement correlations using the tool ellipse. Like mentioned in the previous module, there exists a level of correlation between some anthropometric measures. As a designer, it is important to be aware of changes and variation in those correlated measures, as it might mean that your product needs more variety in sizing or adjustability than initially thought. This illustration shows that body weight can vary a lot between different subjects, while stature remains the same. This is an example of a low correlation between the two measures. DNet helps to visualize this problem using a scatter plot, like the example shown. When a data set is normally distributed, the scatter plot will be shaped like an ellipse. The nice thing about anthropometric data is that most of the time it is normally distributed. With the slight exception of body parts containing soft tissues such as muscle and fat, such as the example of body weight and stature in the previous slide. Following the shape of the ellipse, Conclusions can be drawn about the level of correlation between two measures. The more circular the shape, like the graph on the left, the lower the correlation. This is also indicated by a correlation factor, ranging between 0 and 1, or between 0 and minus 1, if they are inversely correlated. These two graphs are relatively extreme examples of correlations but there are many different shapes in between. When zooming in into one of the graphs, you can see how I used the ellipse tool to analyze the spread of the measure arm length among subjects with a stature of 1 meter 80. It turns out this can differ up to 15 centimeters. I guess that explains why people get their suits custom tailored. Next up, I will show you how to use the ellipse tool. But first, let's consider what to use it for. Similar to the 1D database, the ellipse tool can be used to analyze the means and spread of different anthropometric measures. But in ellipse, the analysis will include a factor of correlation between two measures. A convenient graphic illustration of data points in the shape of an ellipse can be used to decide on a sizing system. For the design of insoles, for example, the correlation between foot length and foot breadth might be important. In other cases, a designer might decide on adjustability solutions. This will come back in the case study at the end of the module. If you are looking for more literature about this subject, this book is recommended. So let's go to the DNet webpage and click on Ellipse. Like for all the other tools, this first page gives you a description of the tool. But let's go immediately to the tool itself. The selection boxes on the left can be filled in. Let's start at the population. We already know this list from the 1D database. However, you might notice that some databases are not available for the Ellipse tool. That is because Ellipse needs information about individual measurements to create scatter plots, whereas a lot of databases only publish mean and standard deviation of their studies. Now it's time to select two measures that you want to compare. DNet now shows me a scatter plot of my selected measures and is drawn in Ellipse surrounding 95% of the individual measures that are closest to the average. With your cursor you can explore the different data points on two axes, and for example mark the mean value. I can label this point and give it a color and a shape. I can also decide to put my own data point on it. Click add a point and fill in your measurements. It's now visualized in the graph. 
There are two ways to add boxes to the graph. The first and the easiest is to use your cursor to click and drag a box where you want it. Give it a name and a color. With these boxes, I can combine data points in groups, for example, to create sizes. These boxes also give me more information. For example, how many of the data points are included in each of the boxes. I can adjust the sizes of the boxes by just clicking on the box and change these numbers. On the top of the graph, I can find some more information. For example, the sample size, the correlation coefficient, and a mean and standard deviation of both measures. I can export my image by clicking download image. Now use this image in a presentation or report. Let's see how we can use ellipse in our case study. You might remember from previous module that we used the 1D database to find out that head circumference in Dutch adults can range between 526 and 602. Even after excluding the smallest and largest 5%. While head circumference remains the dominant dimension in commercial sizing in the helmet industry, it doesn't tell much about the shape of the head. Let's try to obtain those insights from the ellipse tool. For this case, I'm selecting a Caesar database, as I know that it contains much statistics on the head. And I would like to investigate the variety in head depth within a single helmet size. To get a feel of the scale of this spread, I decided to measure some of my colleagues and mark them on the graph. As it turns out, one of my colleagues even falls out of the 95% confidence interval. Using the data from the standard helmet sizing chart, I'm creating boxes, covering the spread of data points within one size range. The first thing that can be observed from this overview is that those three sizes only cover part of the right half of the population. But we can also see that the spread in head depth within the size medium has an absolute value of 27 millimeters. To account for the spread and necessary safety measures, a designer could consider the use of removable soft padding. However, remember that head breadth will consequently vary within this range of head circumference. A common solution for this variation in helmet design is an adjustability wheel for an inner frame. That was it for today. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next time. Thank you.